We're going to spend a few minutes, probably quite a few minutes, going through and creating an example of how to do favorites using Xano and AppGyver. And we're going to start with the server side. So we're going to start in Xano. And I've created a new workspace called Video Tutorial. You can call yours whatever you want. And then I did um, the default workspace setup for an email login. We're not actually going to use authentication in this one at the moment, um, but we are going to show you uh, what's involved with creating the favorites for products. So you can see here how they're defined, but let me go ahead and go into product as a table. And you'll see that I have added a name and a description and a price. Um, I've also pre-filled three products as a starting point. And then in favorites, I'm gonna go through this in a little bit more detail because it's more interesting. Um, the favorites is a cross-reference table between the user. So you need to create a table reference, and I'll show you what that looks like, to the user table. And then you also need to create a table reference to the product table. So if I were to look at this, when I add a new column, I would go to table reference and just very simply select product for one. And then I do this all over again and I would select user. And that is what gave me these two columns. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, Xano's done a good job here of allowing you to do table references. If I add a new record and I double click here, they'll show me what my options are from the product table because I'm in the product table reference. So I can choose headphones and then I can do the same with the user ID. And let's say that, let's see, who do we have here? Cindy favorited headphones. Okay, so now I've got some test data to work with. Um, you can go ahead and pause and create your own columns, table reference to product, ID, to product, table reference to user, add in a few products, call them whatever you want, and then do the same here, create the test data, uh, anything that you want there. And then also the user table that's created for you when you create the workspace, go ahead and add in a few example names and fake email addresses. And that'll give you what you need to do the testing that we're doing next, which is we're gonna come in and create an API. Okay, so we've got an API. These are just the default APIs. We're gonna go ahead and add a new start from scratch API and we'll call this favorites. We'll use the HTTP verb get. Uh, post would be to create, delete obviously removes, put and patch are two forms of updates. And we don't want any of those. We're literally just looking to get a list of products and if they're favorited or not. And like I said, no authentication yet even though that will become relevant towards the end and we may go back to that. Okay, so now all I really need, you know what, I'm already gonna change my mind. We are going to change the settings here and we're gonna make user authentication needed. And the reason I'm doing that is when I create this um, API, I wanna show you how to do it using the ID that's associated with the authentication or the authorization token. So we've got this locked, which means I am gonna go back to my database and I'm going to set a few passwords. And since we're testing, I'm gonna keep it simple. Obviously, you can make your password anything you want. Okay, so we're going to go back into the API. Go into favorites. And when we do run in debug, we'll actually have to validate. But the reason I did this is 
I don't want to pass the user ID in from the user interface into the API because that would allow somebody to pass in anyone's user ID and get back their information. And I'll show you how we do this so that it only uses what is associated to the authorization token. Okay, but that's a whole different story. Let's stay focused. Um, favorites. We are looking to get back a list of all the products and whether a specific user has favorited that or not. So let's start down that path. We're gonna to add to the function stack a database query to query all records, and I wanna get a list of all the products. And I'm gonna go ahead and change my output to be product list. Okay, so we've got that saved. And by default, they chose the original product underscore one. So you'll always wanna to remember to come in and change this. Otherwise, the first time you run it, you will get an error because it'll try to find the response and it won't be there. So now we have the query result matching up with the response we're sending back. Okay, so now if I run this, you'll see that I need an auth token, but they make it nice and easy. I'm just gonna pick one. They'll automatically fill it in for me. And you'll see that I get back all my products but I get no information about whether there's a favorite for it or not. Okay, so we know this much is working, so I'm gonna come back into the query all records, and we are gonna go into output, and we're gonna do an add-on, which is just a way to do a query of data associated with the current query. So we're adding on additional data. Oh, and looky there. Let me see. Here's what we're going to do. This is what you get when you're doing testing. So I'm going to go delete this. You get to watch me do that. In the functions, oops, in the add-ons, we're going to have the one I already did. And just so I don't spoil the fun, I am going to delete this one because we are here to create this, not to use what's already there. Okay, pretend that never happened. We're back to favorites. We're back in the API we were just working on. We were in the query all records. And just to show you where we were, run and debug. It still has the auth token, we'll run it. We get our three products back. Okay. So now I'm gonna come back into query all records in the function stack. I'm gonna to go to output and I'm gonna use add-on. And the add-on is gonna get me additional data beyond what's just pulled back from the product table. Create a new add-on. And I wanna get the favorites data, but I don't wanna get a single item or a list or the count. I wanna know if there is a row in the favorites if it exists, that has a product ID that matches. And then we're gonna just shorten this to be favorite. And you'll see that the add-on by default puts this underscore there. I typically leave it, leave it there just because it's easier for me to understand that was an add-on. And we're gonna match, match, I can't talk. We are going to match um, on the product ID. Okay, so here's what it's added. It's gonna create a new uh, property here that's extended by the favorite. And we're gonna return this in the product list. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And when we run this API, you'll now see that I get back all of these and they all have a true because they have a match of iPhone and a favorite. And so now we're gonna go one step further because we wanna base this just on the user ID. So I only wanna get the products I only want to get the products, we'll get there. 
Okay, you might have noticed that my time has changed by a few minutes and I'm on a different screen. I paused um, without warning there because I realized in our favorites, um, I was moving a little too quick and leaving out a key thing. We're logged in as Pam, if you remember. And when I run this, I got a true back for every product. And the reason for that is that for the add-on, all I was doing is matching on product ID. And I was not taking into account the fact that I just want the favorites for Pam. And so I'm going to show you what it takes to change this to be Pam's favorites instead of this um, indeterminate list that makes it look like Pam has a favorite on everything when she doesn't. So remember, we have an add-on called favorite. Now, when you create that add-on, it's actually putting that over here in the add-ons library. And that's where we need to go to add some additional filtering for Pam, for the user. So I clicked on add-ons, and I'm going to go into favorite, which is the add-on from the query. And this is what is built for you. So we haven't been in here yet, so it should not look familiar. We were passing in the product ID. And by default, it was matching on product ID. That means for each product ID, we're going to see if there's a favorite for it. But also what I want to do is I'm going to go into the custom query. Now I'm going to do an and condition. And for the user ID, so for the favorites user ID, I want that to equal. We're going to go to the authorization ID. So authorization ID, we haven't talked about. You may be aware of it from other videos. But when you log in, you get an authorization token, an authentication token. And embedded in that is the ID of the user. And so we're saying we want to make sure that the user that has favorited something equals the logged in user, which is what this represents. So auth ID is the ID of the logged in user. So we've changed our add-on. We're going to save it so I don't forget. So that it will compare against, if I click here, the product ID has to equal and the user ID has to equal. So let's go back to our API. favorites. Let me just connect the dots for everyone. In output of the query, the favorites is still being used, but it now has some additional filtering that we just added on over here in the library. So we're going to see different results if all goes well. Still logged in as Pam. I run this, and you will now see instead of all trues, I have a false for the iPhone and I have a false for the headphones. And I have a true for the tablet. So Pam likes the tablet, but nothing else. So I'm going to switch over to another Xano tab I have open. And I'm going to go into Favorites, the table. And we're going to take a look here. And the only thing that Pam has favorited is the tablet. And so it's accurately representing favorites at this point. So what you have now is. Anytime I run the favorites, run and debug, uh, let's go ahead and switch to Cindy Harrison and run it. You'll see that Cindy doesn't like the tablet, but likes both the iPhone and the headphones. So she's only a, um, a well, she's not a, fa a fan of the tablet, which if I Go to the favorites just to confirm. Cindy likes the iPhone and the headphones, but she's nowhere in here for the tablet. Okay, so this is the first video. This is showing us how we created a product table and a favorites table. And then we create an association that allows a user to favorite specific products. And then in the library, we created an add-on for our API that filters on the product and the user 
so that when I come back over to the API into the default and favorites, I can get back results for any user who is logged in. Remember, we're checking based on who's logged in and it will return a full product list. So we're not filtering anywhere here on the product list. We are simply filtering to get back what is favorited for every product. So this will give you a full list of products and based on the user will only show true in the underscore favorite for the products that they have favorited. Now, if I wanted to eliminate a favorite, let's go ahead and show what that looks like. I'll go over here and switch to database. Let's say that Pam doesn't like anything. So I'm just gonna delete this out and come back over and run. I wanna make sure I'm logged in as Pam. And you will see that Pam no longer likes the tablet. She actually likes nothing. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and tie this into AppGyver. And there'll be some user interface complexities in that in that we're gonna customize some components uh, to allow the showing of a favorite or not favorite based on the results returned from this API. Hope this makes sense. Um, it'll be a lot cooler when you can see it in the user interface in AppGyver.